I'm going to share with you my closure on why I use a correct sentence structure claim similar to for this claimant sensation of the cognition is with this claim of the facts with the correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar knowledge by the claimant I put that in all of my correct sentence structure claim documents it's in the description of all my videos it's in my emails what that is is giving closure to the source of where the claimant's knowledge comes from me being the claimant in this case now I've seen over the past couple of years some people coming out and saying that a sensation is an impression and I'd like to provide this video as evidence and as clarity and an educational process to those people uh, to give them closure on why a sensation is not an impression it is actually a faculty of perception we sense the world hence the world exists if we did not sense the world the world would not exist it's that simple we have a port of sensation we feel touch smell taste hear and other faculties of perception as well when you get the intuition that like Han Solo says in Star Wars I got a bad feeling about this those types of things are very real it's all part of the port of sensation which is your faculties of perception where data comes into your port of sensation you sense it and then the information docks and then you transship the information out as claims using whatever mode of conveyance you use that is why I put that sentence or a similar sentence in all of my claims to give closure to the source of the grammar the source of the claim the source of the knowledge the claimants knowledge because as I've said multiple times over the past few years if I spill a hot cup of coffee on my arm and I say ow that hurts I'm feeling it it's a sensation there's no arguing with that it is what it is it's not an impression and if someone comes in and tells me no that doesn't hurt then that's a trespass because they're telling me what I should feel or should not be feeling and that happens a lot that is why I use for the claimant sensation because no one can trespass on it the only way someone can do that is if they're telling you what you should or should not do or feel <laughs> which is ridiculous by even mentioning it it's hilarious and you will see those are forms of coercion as well very complex psychological forms of coercion but I digress that's what this video is about I'm going to give closure as to the parse well I'm going to touch on the parse of the SEN because also, I've seen some people who have, are with the claim of studying this grammar for many, many years say that SEN is no contract, as in sensation is no contract. And that just doesn't add up when you follow the continuance of the evidence. You find the word SEN in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. So if SEN is no contract, then guess what? That is why I performed the salvage on the SEN. And I'll leave a link to that up in uh, one of these corners here. I performed a salvage on it to prevent, hopefully, any shipwrecks having to do with this word. And it's open source. And anyone is more than welcome to use it, to be with the oity of it. So here we go. Thank you very much for joining me and on with the rest of the video. Here I will provide continuance of the evidence for my claims on sensation. 
Now here we look it up on Google, and the first thing we see is sensation is a physical feeling or perception resulting from something that happens to or comes into contact with Moving on to Webster's Dictionary, 1828. Sensation is from Latin sensus sentio to perceive the perception of external objects by means of the senses. Sensation is an exertion or charge of the central part of the sensorium or the whole of it, beginning at some of those extreme parts of it which reside in the muscles or organs of sense. The secretion of tears and grief is caused by sensation of pain. Efforts of the will are frequently accompanied by painful or pleasurable sensations. These are not impressions. These are sensations, first-hand knowledge. If someone is crying in grief over the death of a loved one, how are you going to come in and tell them that it's just an impression, it's just an opinion? You can't because it is non-trespassable, it is source. It is what they are feeling, what they are sensing through the port of their senses. It's a tangible contract. Now let's look it up in our etymology dictionary. Sensation from the 1610s, a reaction to external stimulation of the sense organs. Let's go and look at SENSE, 1400s, faculty of perception. One of the five senses, meaning wit, understanding, 12th century. Sense, S-E-N, is positive performance. And let's look it up here just for kicks in the Black's Law Dictionary. Let's see if they have a legal definition for sensation. And guess what? They don't. Why is that? I would say it's because courts navigate according to judges' opinions, not what they sense, an opinion, which is a modification. Let's look up the word sense. Do they even have the word sense in here? As you can see, they do, but it's modified into an adjective pronoun scenario. What is common sense? or popular sense. They're modifying the sense into an opinion. That is why I think sense and sensation are not in the law dictionary, and also why I think in my current sense structure document that it is a very potent technique to use to provide closure for the source of the claimant's knowledge. As I've stated in my Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast, I think it's podcast 18, I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. It's all about adding on. It's all about in addition to, not instead of. Meaning, if you start a correct sentence structure claim using the words for the claimant's knowledge of the facts, that's correct. This is an added technique that I use to give closure to the source of where the knowledge is coming from. You don't have to use it. You're not incorrect if you don't use it. I'm sharing with you this technique for those who have the will to use it and the volition to maintain a position in using it. Because of course, who is going to tell you how you're feeling or what you should be feeling or sensing or shouldn't be? That's a trespass. And it's also a very coercive and controlling mechanic, which is avoidance of the rule one rule equal, I might add. In this section, I'm going to parse the words impression and sensation to give closure on the difference between the two and how they are not related. First, we have impression. We have a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word. It means no. Idea, feeling, opinion, little evidence. Google will give you that definition. 
So when we take it apart, I am is a particle of negation because it means in, not, no. And then the next part is press, which means to squeeze and torture. And then ION means contract. So it's basically a no squeezing, no torture contract. That's impression. Sensation, on the other hand, is known as a faculty of perception. SEN means way, and that's from Old English, Irish, and Welsh. The oldest nativity means of that word. Sate means to satisfy, i.e. satiate. And then I want this contract. So this is basically a way to satisfy contract. So when, so when the perceptions happen, when the data comes into the port of sensation, the port of the senses, it docks at our ports of perception. We formulate knowledge and transship it out. Thus, it's a way to satisfy contract, a source way, sensation, positive performance. Now I'm going to give you an actual example of how I use this in my quantum grammar contracts. So this one you see, for this claimant's sensation of the cognition is with the correct sentence structure, communication, Parsi, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant. What I've done there is given closure to the source of where the claimant's knowledge comes from. For this claimant of the knowledge is with the facts of the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, claim with the cognition by this claimant's sensation, meaning my senses, my port of sensation. Now that I've established the source of where my knowledge comes from, the claimant's knowledge, now I can make a correct sentence structure claim with this airtight closure. For this claimant's knowledge of the facts, the claimant's knowledge of the facts comes from the source of the claimant's sensation in this claim. The claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the joy, with the knowledge cultivation by this claimant's performance. What I've just told you is that it makes me happy to teach and to cultivate knowledge. Backwards, for this claimant's performance of the knowledge cultivation, i.e. teaching, is with the joy of this claim, with the facts by this claimant's knowledge. Where does the knowledge come from? It comes from the claimant's sensation of the cognition or the cognition of the claimant's sensation. It all comes from source, it comes from right here. This is a port. I am port authority. What am I port authority of? My live life, my live life claim number, so on and so forth. These mechanics roll together and it, it works together for the closure, which is what quantum grammar is, a grammar of closure. Thanks for watching. I hope this provided closure to those out there who want the closure and are open to the closure. If you have any questions, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And if they're grammar questions, I'll answer you. If it's anything else, it has nothing to do with me because I am a language tutor I teach the language, I teach the grammar, and that's that. Thanks for watching.